Hello and welcome. This is going to be a video for the Let's Talk About Death series. Um, for those of you that are not up to date, I recently lost an aunt um, who lived with m myself, my kids, and my parents. We all lived in their house <laughs> for <laughs> financial, economic reasons. Um, it was not expected, expected. Um, energetically, it was kind of expected, but in terms of any of the rest of it, it wasn't expected. And it also leaves me in the position of um, caring for my older parents, my, my eldered parents. I'm not sure what the appropriate term is. I don't like calling them old because old gets uh, taken to a weird context, but I also feel like it's a privilege to be able to get old. So like, I don't know. It's a funny line to walk. Um, but actually what I wanted to talk about briefly is I decided to join a couple of groups on Facebook about um, caring for your parents. And I thought it was interesting because one of the groups in particular, there's a lot of folks who are unhappy about taking care of their parents. And I've been thinking about doing videos, not just in the Let's Talk About That series, but I was thinking there would be some good ones to do in this series in terms of that. Because it does, I, I think what really gets to a lot of us is the, when we are taking care of, of elders, whether our parents or others, it brings up thoughts about death a lot, right? That, that creates a dissonance in our minds, I think. Um, but I think that, it's funny, there's a lot of topics I can think of that might, will be good to talk about, but in some of my other series, I think I'll go what, more into, I think what causes us a lot of dissonance when caring for elder parents is that we still have a lot of traumas that occurred to us when they were raising us. And that doesn't, I mean, that goes for wonderful parents as well as, as not so wonderful parents. It, it happens. We, we go through a combination of social conditioning and um, generational traumas and things like that. And if we've not worked those out by the time that our parents are elder and then need then require care and preferably from us who they cared for growing up, whether they did it well or not, they did, you know, they gave birth to us and, and at least we're still alive at this point so they did something right, right? So to return the favor on their way out of this lifetime, at least to me, that's an appropriate thing to do. And... I think it's also good to recognize that the mistakes that we make as parents, we've often already figured that the, a lot of that stuff out and worked it out in our heads and are not going to treat people that way anymore by the time that we're elder. However, not, not everybody is good about reapproaching that stuff or they might feel like the time has passed or things like that and then you run into the complication of what happens when like say you never got apologies for like very obviously inappropriate things and then one or both of your parents gets dementia or alzheimer's or parkinson's or they lose their sight or their their ability to speak wow there is a really big hawk yeah it's not an eagle there's a big hawk that just landed in a tree across from here so think of the hawk's eye view you know there is a lot of things that can come up when caring for elder parents that can create unhappiness and I think that that's an important thing to talk about in terms of talking about death because when you end up caring for elder parents you need to keep in mind that you are effectively you're there you're the usher to the next movie for them and the way that you act as that usher will play a part at least in my opinion in the next life that they live and also in the rest of your life I mean if you think about how do you want to feel when they're gone? How do you want to feel that you were? That you were still mad at them? That you were still upset about different things? It's, nobody's saying that you don't have a right to be, but is that how you want to feel? Because you get the choice on how you feel. You don't get the choice on how they treated you and things like that, but you get the choice on how you feel about it. 
In any case, I'll go more into that in other videos, more specifically about healing parental wounds and childhood wounds. But um, what I more wanted to talk about actually is the privilege of getting old. And I know that a lot of people don't really think about it. And one of the things that came up in the group was somebody was asking about, like, when you see what age does to the body, when you're taking care of elder parents and you're thinking about death, you know, and there's all sorts of things that come in, blindness and... Um, uh, what is it? Oh, I think it's called clout, or not clout, uh, gout, and um, lumbago, and all these different things, uh, congestive heart failure, and breathing problems, and dementia, and Alzheimer's, and many, many things that can go on with the body. That somebody was asking, do you really, do you want to get old? Like, and there's a fair amount of people that were like, no. I don't want to live to a ripe old age, but there is also an equal amount of people. I, I, at first I was surprised at how many no's there were, but then I like, I added my answer going, yes, I look forward to it. I look forward to being a crazy old ripe woman. <laughs> like, I think that that will be fun. Um, it, and, and there's many parts that won't be fun. <laughs> I'm not saying that I am like blind to things like that, but I really, there was a quote that I read once that like, you know, don't, don't turn away from or be afraid of getting old. It's a privilege denied to many. And it is. And there are so many things you can do with a long, long life. If we sit and focus on just about what happens to the body, we miss the point, in my opinion. And on top of that, many people made good points about if you're afraid of what happens to the body, then now is a great time to take better care of your body. And I think that that's an important topic when it comes to talking about death. Like, I'm thinking about our own death. Like, when, you, when, when you're being ushered into the next life and, then, and this lifetime is ending, how do you want your body to be, you know? Like, not everybody goes out in a... I'm going to say a, like a wickedly painful way. Not everybody happens. Some people die in their sleep and their, their bodies were otherwise perfectly fine. You know, some people, um, well, I was just say, I get, I, I, there's like, so, you know, some people get to be over a hundred and then they're just like, they just sense it and they're like, no, nope, it's my time. And they go into the hospital and they'll, they're like, nope, I'm ready. <laughs> put me in hospice like and I used to work in hospice I've seen that happen um there are many many things that can happen and just there are plenty of people that actually make it to ripe old ages and are otherwise physically fine and even those who like have smoked every day for their life who ate red meat and bacon and and did all sorts of crazy things and they lived to be over a hundred and then one day they were like mm, I'm good <laughs> all right, it's time to go on to the next life and I really appreciate that I think if I had a choice in it that would be cool like to be healthy in the body to feel good in the mind and to be in a place where it's like no, you know what? I think I think this I think this vessel is is worn out, and I'm good, and I'm happy with how things have gone in life, and I can call my loved ones and be like, "It's about time." I'm thinking like a week or two. <laughs> Just prepare yourself, you know, <laughs> right? Um, but I think that it's important that we look now at how we feel about the idea of getting old and getting closer to death so that we can work that stuff out in our heads now. Especially as like, I know I have a challenge with my parents in that I wanna say once uh, about every five years for the last 15 years, I have tentatively tried to bring up the topic of not death per se, but what they want to have, ha what they want me to do if they end up requiring like big long term care or they end up in a resuscitation situation or like, yeah, if they die, what do you want me to do? Is there anything important you want me to make sure goes to somebody important? You know, stuff like that. And it's difficult because I don't think my parents had anybody really talk with them when they were younger about getting older or um, 
how to not necessarily be afraid of death or things like that and not to feel like it's like a slight because of how society often treats us when we get older like there's a there's definitely ageism like on both sides of the fence like you can get ageism for being far too young in other in someone's opinion or being far too old in someone's opinion and some people um in fact a lot of people really disparage on aging and and getting older and so i get it but it does make it complicated because you don't want to be bringing up that stuff when somebody's dying you want to talk about it before then and that's challenging but I think that what I'm noticing is that this generation, our generation, and, and the children that we raise, we need to really change the way that we think about aging and death. And, I mean, by all means, if you don't want to get to a ripe old age, well, keep eating junk and and smoking and doing whatever it is that you think will make sure that you exit the soonest if that's really how you feel about it but me I mean I'm working on quitting smoking I've already lost a ton of weight I've changed a lot of my mental health status I would say my I don't know how you'd say it it's not it's kind of like losing weight in the mind right like I've, I've healed a lot of stuff there and I've I've never really had an issue with the idea of getting older. Like I love the gray hairs that come in. I I don't necessarily love the way that my body has been changing before this year because I wasn't taking care of it and that did feel kind of like an old thing. But I've generally always been the kind of person that feels like age is an attitude and I have no problem with being a 99 a 99-year-old bodied 15-year-old. <laughs> you know, or or 22-year-old or 33-year-old or whatever. Because I think that'd be fun. And I think that there's a lot of privileges and mischief that we can get away with when we get old. And that, that it's kind of like when you're a little kid. You know, there are so many things that you can get away with because you don't know any better. And when you get older, there are plenty of things you can get away with because you know better and it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> In any case... um, I'll do more videos about this topic later, but I think for right now, I just wanted to get started on this, you know, this idea of like facing our own shadows in terms of aging and death because it will help us be better parents, be better caretakers for our parents and be better, I think, community members for everybody. And I think a lot of the fear of death would help us stop manifesting things also in terms of like wider societal stuff including uh, these epidemics that keep coming up those are a big sign of a big fear of death and so is things uh, along the lines of, of uh, climate change and stuff like that which I'm not I'm not getting into politically here nor there my opinions on that for this video are irrelevant but I think that it is definitely a manifestation of our collective fear of death and that's something we need to talk about so hence this being in this series of let's talk about death all right well if you have any thoughts or anything to share please feel free to put them in the comments below otherwise I'll see you in the next video